You're going to go then. You're going to run. No. No. Finish out service. Oh, really? Why? Because I'm not a quitter. You're not a quitter. Hey, you're not a fucking cook either. I can't serve this. Ah, team Umizumi. What's cooking, Gordon? Not dessert. Can you fix this? Hmm, the ingredients are right, but there's a pattern problem. I'm on it. Pattern not strawberry shortcake. Cake, berries, cream. Cake, Cake berries, berries cream. cream. See, they get it. Watch this. Pattern colors. Wow, that looks right, but how does it taste? It's not, it's just, no, it's not that, oh, it's not about that! Oh, I could cry, I could just, I could just cry. Oh, fuck! Up, up, are we a fast food joint now? No, no chef! And you're standing here with your little balls of fucking, look at them. Fucking shit! Madness! Get out. Don't kick them out, chef, just kick me up. Listen. Yes, yeah, chef. Don't you fucking dare tell me what to do. Yes, yeah, chef. You? You, 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 fuck off. What? But I don't. You. You is a motherfucker, you know that? Hey, fishermen. Aqua Duelist here. And today, guys, I'm giving you a brand new deck profile on the uh, Ocean Lord Karushin Control or Umi Control as it also goes by. So, really excited to do this deck profile. Guys, the next deck profile I'm doing is going to be Legendary Fisherman. I am so excited to do that, and you know, I'm just happy to see Legendary Fisherman get so much love and support on this channel. Uh, I really did want to do this deck profile kind of first because, you know, this is a new strategy for Mako, and I definitely want to cover that. So guys, be looking forward to the next deck profile. Sadly, the Legendary Duelist set came out while I was away from YouTube, but hey, I'm back, we're doing this, so... Uh, Real quickly, realistically, I'm going to be doing about one deck, uh, sorry, one video a week. Um, basically one deck profile a week if I'm doing a deck profile. So, going into this, guys, the first monster we are playing is three copies of Ocean Dragon Lord Karushin here. So, if you have Umi on the field, he basically makes it to where your opponent can only control one non-water monster. So, he's like a mix of kind of like goes to match with there can only be one in a sense really freaking good what's cool is let's say you're going second you drop this boy on the field uh your opponent can't respond to that at that just effect really so it's like the best way i can kind of describe it would be like trying to imperma jinzo on some and you can't do that so that's basically how that works guys um so yeah Second effect on him, really good. So, once per turn, you can add either a, uh, was it, Karushin spell or trap, or a spell or trap that says C stealth attack. So, this is a very protect the castle style deck, but the way I'm playing it though is we're basically wanting to protect the castle, this, you know, this guy for a turn, and then we just want to go in. OTK and hammer on the opponent. So, yeah, I'm gonna I'm playing uh, probably a few card choices here. Uh, you know, some ratios that some people might not agree with, but yeah, that's why I feel it's just the best way to play a deck. I want to get out the, out the way. So next up, second best monster in the deck, the Electric Jellyfish, Electric Boogaloo. Heck yeah! So with this guy, what he does is you can send a Umi from either deck, hand, or field to grave, you special summon him, and then you drop a war monster in your hand on the field. So, I do want to quick, quickly say on that effect, you have to have that war monster in your hand. I have seen someone try to uh, just, you know, send the Umi and special summon this. Yeah, you, you, you can't do that, guys. You have to have the war monster in hand to summon. Uh, then he's got another effect where you can negate a uh, spell trap or like monster effect and then he gains 600 so that's pretty cool so him with uh, ocean lore right here is pretty busted I like it uh, next up 
So as a one of, I'm playing the Mega Fortress Whale. This is your OTK win con. You never want to draw it. You're actually going to want to summon off another card we'll get to later. So yeah, uh, that's the main thing is he just allows you to OTK. And he has an effect where basically during like the opponent's battle phase thing, it's like you get to pop a monster. Um, that's probably never really going to come up because, you know, you drop him, you just OTK and win. And his last effect just never comes up because we're not playing Legendary Fisherman. Uh, another one of that I feel is, you know, you debatable. You can cut this, actually. Uh, it's Doom Kraken. He's like a weird hand trap uh, for this deck. So you can... What you do is... You return a water monster you control and opponent or a monster your opponent controls back, both back to the hand. You summon him, and then if your opponent attacks, you negate the attack and return him back to your hand. So he just kind of like cycles himself off the field back in your hand in a sense. Uh, if I can't go for the OTK on my second turn, and like let's say I get like a second fish sonar, this is what I'll add to my hand. So you know most likely. So, yeah, it's just, it's a good one of if you can't OTK, I feel. Uh, the other Umi one of card that we're playing is Main of Aqua. Uh, you're going to be doing quite a bit of, you know, just, I guess you could say recycling or like sending Umi in a sense. Um, there's times where she comes up. I feel like she is a must of at one. Uh, I know quite a few people might not agree. I've seen some people opt to not play her while others do. She is a must. You have to play her at one. Uh, particularly because of one other card in the deck. If you have her on the field, just helps guarantee game. Um, but, you know, you're just going to be sending Umi kind of all over the place. She does come up in, you know, circumstances for that here and there. Uh, you do play like 10 copies of Umi, and you know, you're not always able to get to Legendary Ocean. So, there's just times where she'll come up because of that, because she's Umi. It's just, it is what it is, guys. Um, next up, three copies of War of Atlantis. You gotta play ultis. Uh, if you can't get ultis, don't play the deck. Um, yeah, just they're so beautiful. I mean, you, you can play with the ulties. I don't know. I just, I love the ulties. They're, it's a beautiful ulti. Uh, searches Legendary Ocean. So, yeah, there's six copies of Legendary Ocean right there. Uh, next, we play one copy of Terror King Salmon. This is a vanilla that we're going to summon off of what you call a uh, fish sonar. And what's really cool is there's like a going second combo with like fish sonar and Legendary Ocean. That basically just lets you make Zeus. I can talk about that later. So, yeah. Um, that's it for the monsters, guys. So, it's kind of like a... I guess you could say like a somewhat small monster lineup. Uh, especially since, realistically, you're probably never going to summon the, the War, uh, War of Atlantis. So, yeah. Um, going on to spells... Three copies of Legendary Ocean becomes Umi. All war monsters in your hand and on the field, you know, lose a level. So you have to see this. If you're not seeing this, you're not playing. Despite playing like 10 copies of this, despite the draw power, there's just times when you're not going to see it. It's, it's happened. It's happened twice. And in one of those times, uh, Man of the Aqua actually was like super important so yeah that's what I mean guys and then one copy of terraforming there's a total of seven copies right there so yeah uh, three copies of fish sonar uh, this card is awesome it's Rhoda on crack so you can add any monster that has Umi in its uh, card text from deck to hand and if you have a Umi on the field, you get to summon a vanilla from deck on top of that. So, literally, Legendary Ocean's on the field. You activate this, you know, grab your Crucian or, like, Electric Jellyfish if you have a Crucian hand. And then just, just go ahead and summon that Terra King Salmon. 
That's three bodies right there. Just mm, beautiful. Uh, next up, three copies of Sea Stealth Attack 2. I know not everyone's going to agree with this, but trust me, you want to maximize on your just protect the castle cards because... If you maxima, if you draw like this with like Karushin and uh, like Sea Stealth Attack one, you're good, and you can just grab the other trap you need for OT to OTK. Uh, so yeah, it just maximize out on those card guys. So this basically makes it to where my opponent can't target my war monsters with non-war monster effects. Uh, it's got a second effect that just it's pretty irrelevant. Just gonna be real with you guys. That's the only te the only effect that matters off of this realistically. Uh, next up, three copies of Fury Crucian. It grabs uh, was it Torrential Tribute, and then you can banish it from Grave to protect your water monsters once. Um, not playing Rage, I despite Rage being a really good and powerful card. Uh, it's just this deck is. I feel just too slow for it uh, in order to really utilize it. So you want to? I decide I want to max out on Fury here uh, for draw power. Three copies of Pa Prosperity. Uh, you need to dig for you know Legendary Ocean or you know Umi, and you want to essentially dig for you know this or like uh, Fish Sonar, which is even better. You guys get the idea. Just just dig for your important pieces. You don't really need your extra deck all that much. Uh, next up, for draw power, three copies of Pod Duality. Uh, despite having, you know, like two cards that let you special summon, because, you know, Fish Sonar and then the Electric Jellyfish, uh, you can play around, you know, like you, you, you don't particularly need to use them, you know, instantly or, you know, turn one. Uh, you just want to get... You just want to get this guy. You want to get this guy and protect him. So, you know, not being able to special summon really doesn't hurt you all that much. So don't even worry about it. You can play around it. So, yeah, that's that's it for the spells, guys. And going on to the traps, play three copies of Torrential Tribute. It's Torrential Tribute, not much else to say. Grab it with Fury. Next up, three copies of OTK City here, uh, Karushin, uh, Karushin's Dark Reef. So this is what's going to let you OTK. If you got, you know, your Ocean Lord here, you know, this guy, you got like a Sea Stealth Attack like 1 and 2, or you know, like, just, you know, you, 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 if you can guarantee you can protect that Karushin for a turn, you search this, and then what you're going to do is on your opponent's turn, like end, like the end of their turn, basically, just you activate this, you send an Umi you control, and then you get to special summon two monsters with Umi in their card text, and then if your opponent controls monsters, you get to summon as many normal, you know, just vanillas as possible. So, yeah. Uh, what's cool is if you have this... This will actually bring back that Umi that you just sent. Or, you know, let's say you have Maiden of the Aqua. You can just send Maiden of the Aqua. You know, this is that uh, this is a circumstance where you want to have um, Maiden of the Aqua on the field because it just ma it makes your job easier of wanting to OTK. But, so this basically just activates an Umi from Grave if you don't have one. And then... With this, uh, your war monsters can't be a shroud battle. You know, whose original level were five or higher can't be a shroud battle against non war monsters. And uh, you can protect your back row. Oh, and uh, Sea Stealth Attack 2 also becomes Umi on the field. So, yeah, you can send a Sea Stealth Attack 2 with this and you're good. So, yeah. you, you That's what I mean. Like, you know, you, you, you're going to. You're going to be sending usually at least one Umi from field to grave. So having, you know, other cards that say, you know, they're Umi really helps out, guys. So that's it for the main deck. Um, the only reason why I don't actually play three copies of this 
which I know it contradicts myself there a little bit. Um, I've always played this card at two, and every time I play it at three, I keep drawing multiples way too much. Um, you don't mind drawing multiples of Sea Stealth Attack 2 because it's just another Umi you can send to Grave for a Karushin's Dark Reef. So, yeah. It's like, you know, it's just... it's. I feel like it's just too bricky at 3. Um, so, yeah, that's the only, like, contradiction there, guys. So, going to the extra deck. Play one copy of Bahama Shark. One copy of Toad. This is mainly as an mainly there to be a like ultimate slayer target. Now here's the combo I was telling you guys with fish sonar. And so you're gonna drop, you know, like Karushin, and you're gonna grab Sea Stealth Attack specifically, and you're gonna summon the uh, Terror King Salmon. You're gonna drop this guy. You're gonna detach to make uh, Nightmare Shark here. You're gonna summon. Uh, full armored black ray lancer over the nightmare shark. You can then go utopic uh, utopic future into utopic Draco. Battle phase swing. Zeus. You just Zeus, and then you can set that sea stealth attack two during your main phase two. Activate it. You can put legendary ocean back on the field, guys. That's what you can do there uh, so yeah just a nice going second play you can do uh, also I am playing the number 27 package uh, which is you know 27 gust of uh, cannon max and then Libby. it's just another way to OTK your extra deck really doesn't matter all that much um, so yeah like the only cards I'd really recommend is the you know the Bahamut shark to you know Zeus like those, I feel like, are probably what you at least want to really play. Uh, one copy of Abyss Dweller. It's just really good. Uh, for Ultimate Slayer Fusion targets, I play one of the, uh, what you call it, Elder Entity Entis, and then one Garuda. Uh, I think it's nice just to have the option of choosing do I want to pop two or do I want to pop and draw, or, you know, just, or, sorry, return and pop. Or do I want to return and draw? Um, I just think having that option is really good, and you can afford to play both. Uh, for Lynx, I just didn't know what to play. Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn, it's just generic, you know, utility. It's not even for Ultimate Slayer. I mean, you could ultimate, you could, you could probably find a better, you know, if you wanted to play a Link for Ultimate Slayer, you know, you could. You probably got options. So, yeah. But, yeah, it's just I didn't know what else to put in. So, why not? Um, I do side deck the Ultimate Slayer, so that's why I'm mentioning it. So, yeah, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this deck profile. Next deck profile that is going to be up is Legendary Fisherman. I want to thank you guys for all the love and support. Uh, just, for, you know, for the channel and you know for the legendary fisherman content it's awesome guys you guys are the best you guys are awesome and uh, i just felt like y'all need to, to hear that so go ahead and harpoon that like button harpoon that subscribe button for awesome content realistically we're going to be doing one video a week for a while and link in the description down below to my instagram comment any comments y'all have and i will see y'all in the next video guys